I've got a few of these things. Uh, these are cheap remote controls. Um, you might have seen this type yourself. So you've got four radio controls through the same remote. And um, these are quite good. They work quite well. But um, I've had a couple of these go bad after a couple of years. So uh, after two years or so in operation, if you if you leave them plugged in, what happens is they stop, stop switching, so they stop working. So the LED still comes on when you press the remote, but um, the relay doesn't click any longer and, uh, and it stops working. So this one here I've taken apart and um, what I noticed is that the uh, the capacitor here, so this is a mains rated X series capacitor, uh, which which was in here, and I measured the value of that capacitor, and it's really way wrong. So this is a 0.33 microfarad capacitor, and when I measured it, it was something like nanofarads. So um, so I've unsoldered it. And I just measured it again, and it really is just a few nanofarads. So this capacitor has gone bad. So I'm suspecting that this is why the unit doesn't work any longer. So I'm going to put an, an, a new one in there. I'm going to replace the capacitor and see how we go. Okay, so as you see, it's a pretty simple sort of circuit. So over here in the top corner, we've got, um, it's a capacitive dropper basically. So there's a, there's a diode in there. There's this big capacitor. And I think this resistor here, I don't know, maybe that's a fusible resistor or to limit inrush current, something like that. But this, so this is the power power supply section, which is very simple, and then uh, there's a radio section up here. So these are the radio frequency components. There's a couple of little inductor coils there, and the main chip here is a standard multiplexing chip. Um, so this is the SC5272. Um, which you can easily look up on the internet. So it's a standard chip that you find in these things. Okay, um, so I've got a replacement cap. So this is 0.33 microfarads, 275 volts. Uh, doesn't quite fit the space, but what I was thinking is I could I could overhang it like this and I think there's space inside the the case so that I can make that fit. So we'll go ahead and do that. Right, so let's put a bit of copper wire through the hole there so I can extend that lead. Just put a little bit of sleeving over here. It's the old cap. I don't want that one. That's why I put an X on it, you see. Remind me that's the dead one.
right. That looks better. Okay, so there's the new cap installed. So uh, I'll reassemble it and uh, let's see how we go. Two little uh, selector switches. They select the frequency and the and the channel. So the one, two, three, four selector. moment of truth. Uh, oh no, that's the wrong one. That's my lighting system here. We go number three so so that's working again now and let me just make sure that's actually supplying power plug in that battery charger and there we go power on so there we go there's the uh there's the culprit a blown cap and the answer is to change it for a new one. <laughs>